Are you addicted to art? Can't seem to kick the habit? Well then... This is ridiculous! I've been reading this copy each week, trying to escape from this endless void, and no, even with all my magical powers, I cannot. I cannot escape this void, and all they do is pay me in, in cookies and, and little snacks, but no, no, I'll never escape. They promised me my freedom, that Ben and Daryl, but no, I will not. I will not read the copy anymore. I will not do it. No matter how much you taunt these snacks in front of me, I am the great wizard Art Anonymous, and I will not stand for it. Not any longer. I refuse. Hey everybody, this is Art Anonymous. It's a podcast where a digital sculptor, that's, uh, well, I guess that's me. Yeah, I was yep. going to say that to you, but that, that is oh, in fact me. That is in <laughs> that's fact me, you. That's me, Ben, and a traditional sculptor. <laughs> that's me, Daryl. That is Daryl. Uh, we talk about art, the meaning of life, and everything in between. Our AA meetings will be sure to save you or aid you. Man, I'm just not a very good reader. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> they will aid you in your artistic quest, probably. They probably, they probably will. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Probably, maybe. That's probably what we maybe. like to say. Mm-hmm. We're very confident here. Yep. Uh, we do not fact check ourselves. Nope. Ever. Because right. I'm always right. Well, well we're, we're always right. Together, you know, yeah. 50-50. Well, 60-40, but yeah, 60, nobody, 40. Yeah, nobody's really counting. <laughs> yeah. Except for me. And and that equals 100, so. <laughs> exactly. We're always right. Yeah. So we, we start off each episode. With an by, art prompt. By doing our art prompt. That's right. <laughs> well, when we remember to do the art well, prompt, yeah, we, we always remember. start it with an art prompt. But we remembered this time. So, Daryl. For you, oh wait, let's let's explain the art prompt for people who have never first, first listeners, right, first time exactly. listeners. So we both say a word at the same time, but first we give each other a category, and then we combine those. We we Frankenstein them together mm-hmm. to create our art prompt. Yes, and uh, then then you, the listener, our AA members, can make can the art. can what what are the four types of art again, Daryl? Uh, uh, sculpting, sculpting, painting, drawing, drawing, and, l- and love. And love. Yeah. And okay. Love. Okay. So that's the yeah. four types of art that you can submit to us. Uh, so so any of those mediums are okay, but anything else we'll kind of just disregard because yeah. it's not really art. Yeah, it's not really art. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Daryl, from you, I need a word in the category of monster. Monster. And you can't say Frankenstein because. I just use the, the term did. Frankenstein be stealing. to piece to, Exactly. That'd be a little bit of cheating. All right. And then from you, I want a uh, vegetable. A vegetable? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Hmm. Can't think of any. All right. Does I want corn? <laughs> uh, okay, I think I have one. All right, I have one as well. Three, two, one, asparagus. Medusa. <laughs> oh no oh this is so good yeah that's perfect <laughs> so a, a medusa, so medusa and instead of snakes on top of the head they got some asparagus there's a bunch of just asparagus and what happens if you look at medusa uh your pee smells funny <laughs> <laughs> so instead of getting turned to stone well first of all you're scared so you wet yourself yeah of course and then she she immediately knows and laughs at you because yeah. it, it, it smells, smells so weird it's so such a foul <laughs> seeping oh no smell. this was definitely our best yeah, best a prompt ever yeah definitely all right well last time we talked about um what, what did we talk about we talked about oh yeah setting yourself apart but all that all that, all that disappeared. <laughs> yeah, so you, the listener, doesn't know this, but we <laughs> recorded a previous episode that went straight down the toilet. Yep. The audio track for Daryl's microphone just didn't record, and nope. it just sounded like I was kind of talking to myself the yeah, whole time. Yeah, just like is, a madman. Yeah, which is what I normally do. Yeah. But <laughs> I, that happened once on 8-Bit Bros, too, on one episode. Like, my mic cut out, and Bryn was, like, talking about Fritos. So you just talk to yourself the whole time. Yeah, well, no, I, Bryn was just over there talking, like, oh. yeah, yeah, chili Fritos are the best. <laughs> and then he's just like... Just mm-hmm. some good audio yeah, audio exactly. quality right yeah. there. Good audio content all together. So we, we talked about uh, setting yourself apart when the landscape of, of art is so saturated with all these amazing artists. Mm-hmm. And I think pretty much we came to the conclusion that... You that can't. You're, <laughs> you, well, <laughs> you can't, but it'll happen naturally, right? Yeah, Over exactly. time. And, yeah. 
And w once you see that happening, you can kind of decide for yourself if you want to lean more into that yeah, direction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's to be unique and not unique in like a, a way that you necessarily are doing purposefully. But, you know, your own style will show as you progress through your um, art creation. You know, everybody has an aesthetic. And if you can make it so that your aesthetic is linked to you, then um, that's what you want to do. That's what you want to go for. And that is especially true, um, you know, with specific things. Everybody makes, like, specific things. Like we were talking about, um, really, really popular artists generally make the same thing. You have really popular character artists and really popular um, just Whether, whether it's, like, sci-fi or fantasy yeah, exactly. or any category that it falls into. Exactly. And it's not that those artists can't branch out. And most of them, almost all of them, I would guarantee – can replicate any sort of aesthetic that they need to or wanted to. It's just that their fan base has grown around this certain sort of style. So find something that you love making, right. keep making it, and eventually you'll you'll be um, your own personal way of making that thing will will stand yeah. out and set you apart. Yeah, and I can name tons of artists that I can just see their art and immediately know who it is. And yeah. those are some of my favorite artists that you know yeah. you, you immediately recognize their work, and it's like this weird catch catch 22 of like well i i don't know i want to i want to be good at at all the types of art right i want to be able to create anything and and everything and i i don't want to i don't want to pigeonhole myself into this one specific thing and it's like well it's it seems backwards thinking but the more niche you become the more valuable you are for that thing yeah and yeah. in all actuality the more valuable you are for that thing the the more your skills in other artistic fields are actually going to to improve as you improve that one thing, they kind of all start to come up together. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being, um, and I would say that like you would want to have multiple skills and a wide array of talents, but it, it really depends on what you really want to do. Do you want to, do you want to stand out as an artist or do you want to be someone that can be hired to replicate things or be hired to create a wide array of things? So it's sort of like, um, I mean, you could just harken it back to sort of like a video game, really. And like, what do you want to put your talents in? Let's say if you had like a, a talent tree or something, <laughs> do you want to do you want to spread them out and you know have a good little bit of everything, yeah. or do you want to be good have, at everything yeah. but not great at anything? Exactly. Or do you want to have a a majority of your skills in one thing? And I think one is good for one thing and one's good for the other. So it's really up to you. Like if you want to get hired as, oh, I will, I can be a production artist, but I can also be, you know, a, whatever I can get hired on as a character artist, but also as a prop artist, but also as an environmental artist. Um, but I won't be the go-to environment artist all the time. Um, or I won't be the go-to character artist. Um, and if you want to be that go-to person, the person who, if you really, really love making characters, just make characters and just keep doing that. Um, that would be my advice. Yeah, I, I think I'm definitely in the same encampment there. A lot of people, I think, start off more so as, as kind of saying, at least in the digital field, saying that they want to be like a generalist in, in these different areas. And I think that definitely changes over time as they realize more and more that initially it seems like a good idea for marketing yourself for work that that you're a generalist, right? That you can yeah. hit all these different marks on a on a checklist. But it turns out that that's not actually what people are looking yeah, for. No. They're looking for a very specific thing, typically. Yeah. And and they want you to be the best at it. Right. Exactly. It, they're always going to hire the best. Like, mm -hmm. of course, you know, money and everything else comes into into play with that. But they're going to hire the best that they can afford. Exactly. Yeah. And if you're not that, then you don't get hired. Exactly. They might say, "Oh, well, we already have." We're looking for someone to create characters for this, you know, video game or animation, whatever. And we don't really need an environment artist. We have an environment artist. And uh, if you can, say, if, but if you say, you know, I can make environments and I can make props and I can make characters, well, they're going to say, well, we have the two other people for that two other job. Right. And comparatively to this one person who only makes characters, well, you sort of fall short on that list. So we're going to hire this guy. But at the same time, if you're looking at like a small production, maybe they do want one person to do a majority of their work. Yeah, so, I think it. Um, yeah, it definitely depends on the situation. It depends what you want to do. Yeah, a lot of factors there. But uh, yeah. at the end, at the end of the day, you have to kind of decide which which way you're going to go. And like mm -hmm. I said, I think the more time that you spend as an artist, the more you start to lean into that niche of yeah. of your own voice and your your own desires of what you like to create. 
more yeah, and more. Definitely. I think also, I mean, you could compare this back to what type of art do you make and what do you use to make your artwork? Um, you know, a lot of artists, especially the artists that go to school um, or get their BFAs or MFAs, they're required to take painting, drawing, screen printing, printmaking, um, sculpture and ceramics, you know, all of the traditional based uh, mediums. That's to help you discover where you exactly. want to kind of lean more towards that exactly right? yeah not not only that but also so you can apply different you know techniques and different things and you know bring learning in fundamentals things. exactly yeah um <clears throat> it's good to be well-rounded like you were saying but yeah. that was in the beginning and in the beginning you become well-rounded but then naturally you lean towards a certain thing so like art school you pick a focus and I, my focus was ceramics um i naturally lean towards ceramics and i think similarly we're talking about the next step the next advanced step which is okay you found the art that you lean to now you have to find what in that field of art that you lean towards creating. Um, so it's similar to that, similar to the first step of finding what you like to make your artwork with. Um, in the same way, it just takes time and it takes experience. And I would say play around with a lot of different things. Oh, maybe I do like characters, but I hate making eyes. So uh, maybe characters aren't for me necessarily. You know, certain things, certain things that you, you'll find maybe that you just hate to work on like fingers or i like sculpting busts but i hate sculpting full characters it's exactly like, well yeah. maybe you shouldn't be doing character art then maybe you like those yeah. small little projects more so maybe like try some prop stuff or some environment stuff yeah or, exactly yeah so so for like the traditional art world for like a ceramicist like yourself do you do you find that having that that more niche market that more specialization actually helps market yourself better Honestly, I wouldn't know right now. I mean, I'm going to be 100% honest. Uh, uh, I am I am going through the phase of graduating college and then trying to trying to do this, you know, trying to be an artist. Um, and right now I have to put my art on hold just simply because of financial um, reasons. You know, I need a job so I can go get a studio space and make more art. Right. Um, but when I was in school, I would say... I would say definitely. I would say definitely... It helps a lot. I would say when I was in, for instance, I'm a sculptor, but also a potter. So um, I also make pottery as well as sculpture. Um, and when I was in wheel throwing, my professor was, um, and I've said this before, but he would look at my work and he would say, you know, and it was by itself on a on a cart with, you know, 30 other people's works and just hundreds of works that But he could tell it was yours. And he would look at it and say, oh, I know that's Daryl's. And he would pull it apart and he would like, honestly, he would fire my stuff different and make sure my stuff got... Um, got into the kiln better and like, you know, all the technical stuff, but he knew it was mine just by looking at it. And that's really important because he would see it and he'd say, you know, I know that's yours. And, and also it looks good. And like, um, I would say that's really important. I would say a lot of artists have that sort of thing, you know, for ceramicists, a lot of potters would be like, Oh, well I make round, you know, really, um, curved forms, really angular forms. And that's sort of what they make and what they like to make. And that just comes naturally. Like I said, I, my forms and my, what I make, and you can um, you can find that on my Instagram. Um, that came, that all comes from just practicing, practicing, practicing. What do I like? What don't I like? Oh, maybe I'll move this, try this thing here. And that's the thing. I found what I liked, and then I I think okay, well maybe I can push that a little bit further, and then I take it too far, and I think okay, that's too far. So let me rein it back in one step, and then and then it becomes then growth comes, and I become a little bit better each time. Yeah, the the getting better at art is, I, I don't know, I, so many people struggle with it, and it's like, it's going to come. Yeah. It's, it's, it is inevitably going to come yeah. with time and practice. Yeah. But the the harder part of setting yourself apart and, and finding your own voice and your own style and, and whatever whatever that is for whatever artistic medium that, that you create and produce, I think, I think that's the harder thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the one that takes... I think that takes years and years. Yeah. I, yeah, it takes years. It takes time. It takes it takes a lot of thought too yeah. to, to exactly. figure out like yeah. to to first realize that that this thing keeps reoccurring and then to like grab a hold of that and lean more into that. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, it's and it's a lot of pushing out of your boundaries. You know, as you get better, you start off you know bad like everybody else. Just like in any, let's say your regular job, you're not going to start off really good, right? But with art, it's really easy to compare yourself to those greats and then like sort of feel bad about that um that you're not with their their talent level yet but that comes with time and everybody knows that um you know just keep trying just keep pushing um but the next thing is like you said the recurring themes and the the stuff that makes you you your work your work um it really is about finding it 
really is about noticing, oh, wait, what is that thing that I'm constantly doing? And then also, like, you have to think, um, what is it that you like making? What do you like creating? You know, don't make stuff for money. I, I say this all the time. Don't make stuff just to sell it. I refuse to do it. I could easily make, you know, mugs of whales, like, cute, <laughs> like you know, cutesy little mugs and, uh, like, you know. Why don't you, Daryl? Because it's not art. To me, it's not art. It's cr- that's crafty. And that's just me selling myself for money. And I could do that to make a lot of money. But then it wouldn't be true to myself. And then I might as well just get a regular job. It's not something you want to do. Exactly. Yeah. And if you want to do that, it's totally fine. If you like making art. And yeah, you if you like don't... creating shitty little whale mugs, go ahead. That's <laughs> yeah. what Daryl's saying. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a good transition into something new that we're trying here. Yeah. Something new that we... <laughs> yeah. Well, we tried in our last episode that that got thrown thrown away. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately. So, Unfortunately, yes, it was. It was a pretty, pretty funny one. We had some nice goose in there, but mm-hmm. uh, our new thing that we're trying to do here is some critiques. Daryl, yes. what's so special about these critiques? Oh yeah, they are um, from Deviant Art. Well, a, a little small unknown website that many of you have probably not heard of. Oh yeah, right, DeviantArt.com. Yeah. DeviantArt.com. Yeah, it's a uh, rich in resources of uh, amazing it's inc- art. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah. I've never heard of this website before, but yeah. there's so many just amazing artists on it. Yeah, yeah, and we, you know, wanting to be fair, we went directly to the newest submissions. Or the best submissions. The best submissions, right? and we uh, we pulled a few gems out of there, and we're gonna critique them. So, so what we do essentially is Daryl and I independently find amazing artwork mm-hmm. on DeviantArt.com yep. without sharing it with the other person. Yep. And then right here, right now, we're going to give it to the other person and have them um, give a little critique here of this amazing artwork. So yes. Daryl, I have uh, a f- the first one here for you. I just want to read the title okay. for you first, though, before I hand it over, just to give you a little... Little tease. Little tease. It's called uh, Sarah Shirt Tease. Sarah Sarah Shirt Tease. <laughs> Sarah Shirt Tease. Okay. There you go, man. Oh, this is great. This is this is phenomenal. Sarah Shirt Tease. Okay, this is uh. Let we'll, me. We'll, we'll, I'll I'll remember to edit these back in the video so that you guys can check them out as well. <laughs> yeah. Um. So what the way this is gonna work? I'm just gonna explain, set the scene, uh, as best as I can without taking too much time. Okay, so in this image, we are outside at night. It seems to be like a... I'm getting a lot of mood vibes off this yeah. one. Yeah. Like, I'm feeling already, just off the color scheme, that I'm, yeah. you know, I'm feeling it a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's very, very dark, dark color scheme. It's very, like, uh, not medieval, a little bit past that. But Sensual, it, exactly. It could, it could be medieval. It could be. It's very dark tones. It's outside. There's castles in the background um, where the perspective of the painting, it looks like a digital painting. There's... There's a um, a building edge, so the corner of a building, right in the middle. Getting a little a little warmer. Yeah, right in the middle of the uh, the photograph, and just to the right of this the edge, there's a woman, uh, who I'm assuming is Sarah. Um, she. You know, that's not confirmed yet. <laughs> yeah, it's not confirmed. She is a redhead with freckles. Um, looks to be about twenty. Has a nice orange flower in really her hair. Really, just teasing it there, aren't you? I know, yeah. She's wearing a blue blue shirt, but it looks to be a very out of place and out of date. It's a like a tank top or a wife beater. Um, she has enormous mu- muscles. <laughs> Thank you. The most massive muscles in the world. <laughs> oh god. She is very sensually looking at the camera, like very seductively, and uh, like a tease, you might say. A tease, like Sarah shirts tease. This makes sense. Um, she has on looks like jeans. She's pulling them down slightly to show her V, her obliques. And uh, the oblique V's, yeah, and her arms are massive. Let me just try and compare them to your head. Her biceps and triceps together are about one and a half times <laughs> the width of her, her, her own head. Well, that's fine. I mean, that's that's pretty natural for that's the, pretty the real normal. buff ladies, yeah, exactly. Um, she doesn't seem to have any breast fat tissue, just all pectoral muscle. That's interesting, yeah, she's well, lifting happens. her shirt up. Lifting her with, shirt up with, with the her. real buff ladies, of course. Yeah. Now, uh, just inst- instant like critique rating here, one to ten. One to ten. Um, for technicality, I'd give it a, a good eight or nine. Okay. All right. For concept, give it a good good three or four. I I just don't. <laughs> 
I don't know, man. I mean, it's a little. It's you, a real. A gem. lot of this. I, well, let me just be very clear here. Clear here. A lot of the art on Deviant Art is just you know it's it's beyond us. Yeah, it on is. A, it's, it goes over on a technical and conceptual level. Yeah, yeah. And it's 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 hard for us to critique this sometime, but mm -hmm. um, you know we we do our best here. Yeah, I think. I think this artist. I don't know if he painted this or if it is just. Oh, absolutely not! It's Photoshop. It's just my stolen. Friend. Yeah, it's just, just stolen. Just give a little scroll down there and check out all the others. That's what I know. Yeah, this seems to be stolen. Well, look. It seems uh, to be a common theme. Stolen, in their matte so, painted, uh, appropriated. Um. Yeah, I think that's more correct, more yeah. in line. Yeah, it's uh, quite extraordinary though. Okay, so do you have uh, something for me to check out, Daryl? Yeah, of course, of course. Um, this one I found about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> what? Uh, it's, Just throw that out there. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, I put a lot of time and thought when I picked this one. Okay. I don't know the title. I think it's called No. It's called No. York No. York No. York All right. I'm no. very excited to see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Alas, yeah. poor York, I knew him, Horatio. Uh, so, where do I, I'm, I'm a little perturbed, and I think, I think that's intentional from the artist. I think so, too. Um, but I yes, agree. there's definitely some Shakespearean vibes going on here, uh, with this little gremlin creature, who yeah. almost has eyes that look like a hammerhead shark, the way that they're extending. I don't know if that's intentional, but he's got a nice cute little tail back there, there's a lot of... A lot of good ruffles and folds going on in this clothing. Uh, really, uh, just straight straight up, I'm going to give this um, a 9. A 9? A 9, just straight up. 9 out of 10 for sure. This is, nice. this is good stuff. Yeah, this is I good think art. so too. Uh, and it's got some poetry in there, some mm -hmm. poetry slam. Uh, really, I it's really hard for me to find fault with this artwork. Uh, my, my only critique, you know, going compliment sandwich-wise here... Mm -hmm. Is that it's a little creepy. It is creepy. A little bit, a little bit nightmare fuel. Uh, but you know, closing off that compliment sandwich, the skull, the the top of that skull is just, it's done very well. Is it? It's just, yeah. you know, that skull alone, ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Nice. Yeah, I love this. I love this so much. <laughs> I found this ten minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> While we were talking. Yeah, yeah. Well, we like to prepare quite. Uh, mm -hmm. quite a lot before we record. I yeah. mean, we spend how many hours preparing all this content? Negative two and a half. <laughs> Minus two and a half. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I mean, I definitely put some thought into it. I just uh, dropped the ball on my on my uh, art, oh, no, my deviant art. Uh, well, you know, it's such today. such good art that it's hard to... Exactly. I, I just all. knew I could get in here and scroll through and find the find best. Find something great. Yeah. All right, so next up, we're going to do a question from an AA member here, Daryl. The question reads, what do you guys think about art school? What do you think about art school? I hated it. You hated art no, school? No, just kidding. I loved art school. Really? Yeah, art school was great. I would say it costs a lot of money, and you have to think business Brad. The business Brad of me is coming out <laughs> in a second. I'll do oh, the no. business Brad, and then I'll, I'll channel Art Anonymous again. All right. Um First thing I would say, you have to think if it's if it's worth it financially for you. I'd say, how serious are you? Um, you know, you're talking about a thirty thousand dollar investment, usually at minimum, and that's at minimum, right? Yeah, and that's just a lot of money. Now, there's a lot of ways to make money um, in college, and a lot of ways to displace that investment that you're going to have to make by getting scholarships or grants or mm -hmm. things of that sort. Um, but it. It's not just the money aspect, it's also a lot of time, and it's also a lot of, you know, you're not going to be guaranteed anything at the end of your career as a college student. You're just going to, essentially what you'd be guaranteed is skills, but no guarantee in, like, um, the world as a, as a place um, to find you to be an artist. Depending on where you yeah. go to university. Exactly. It's like, uh, the University of Cincinnati in the DAP program has, mm -hmm. like, Almost a hundred percent placement. Yeah, but I'd say it's a little bit different. Um, That's pretty rare as well for yeah. a college to really, really hold your hand through that whole yeah. whole scenario. 
But I would, I would say one thing with like, it depends on what you want to go for too. Like uh, if you're going for graphic design or any design based industry um, in the fine art sense and art school sense, you're almost, you are almost guaranteed a job. I mean, there's so much need for graphic designers. It's ridiculous. Um, uh, so in that sense, yes, probably. But if you're going the more traditional route, painting, sculpting, ceramics, um, those sorts of things, you don't really find a job where you can go, go out and be a sculptor. I mean, there are a few, there are a few, but they're very competitive. And uh, a lot of them are, teaching positions a lot of them are that's teaching that's going to take positions. even more school exactly i mean that's what i want to do i want to be a teacher but i just graduated my bfa and now i need to go back and get my um, licensing um to be a teacher a certified teacher so it's it's a lot of time and it's not going to pay off immediately but if it's what you love and i'll come back to channel art anonymous not that business brad is yeah exactly <laughs> if it's what you love then do it i mean education is great Art school, I think, is invaluable because it teaches you um, things that you're not going to learn on your own, and it does it in a way that is much faster. I would say it's an accelerated course to refining and growing your skill. I mean, it, it forces you to spend 40 to 80 hours a week making artwork. And it forces yeah, if you're, you to, if you're willing to put in the time. Exactly, and that's the thing. Which, is, if you're going to art school... Or if you're going to school in general, I think you should. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's that's the thing is you, you get out of it what you put into it. So like for me, I put in 80 hours a week every week because I, I love doing it and I really wanted to get really good at it. Um, and I wouldn't say I'm the best, but I would say I grew substantially based off of the amount of time that I, I put into it. Um, so I would say, and I would say just the whole experience and everything was really great. You learn how to critique, you learn how to get comfortable you learn how to network and talk to community and and you the really awesome thing about school is you get a big community around you all the time and you can bounce ideas off of you can talk to they can critique you you can critique you them. have a essentially a group of people that are you know if you're kind of falling behind the pack they're gonna be there to kind of kick you a little bit and be like yeah. hold you accountable exactly yeah and that's really really nice and sometimes you don't want them to but um sometimes you need it <laughs> yeah sometimes that's what you need and and then you graduate and you still know those people and you still know those um, professors that can help you out and you can you know it's just opens a lot of doors for resources and friends and like-minded people and just it'll make the path a lot easier along the way instead of trying to start off alone um which there's nothing wrong with that i don't think um i would just say one is a very financially driven course which is school and like you know, you have to commit to that. And the other one's a lot of self-motivation course. Um, doing it alone, you have to be entirely self-dependent, which some people are, like Ben, for example. Um, didn't go to art school. He went to he went to school for, I forget, what did you major in? I went to school for media informatics, media which informatics. is essentially a new media arts degree. Fancy way of saying uh, you studied a bunch of um, digital technologies for creating digital content. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, Pretty much a fake degree for those uh, listening. It's not, I wouldn't say it's fake, but yeah, <laughs> I get what you're saying. Um, but like, so Ben, you know, he got his media informatics degree, didn't like what he was doing. So he said, you know what? I love art. I'm going to make art. And, but Ben's really self-motivated. So he does everything himself and learns himself. And I think he's grown a lot himself over the years, but, um, but I think it takes a certain type of person to do that. And then it, if you don't fall into that category, if you think, oh, well, if I do this, I might flake out on it after a couple months, I might fall off but it is what I really want to do how do I keep that up how do I build that ability to work independently art school might be the answer for you art school is a great way to build that that self-motivation keeping busy liking being busy you know after five years of art school which is a regular time for a BFA um, you're going to be as soon as you graduate after a couple of days of not doing anything because you graduated you're going to be like, get man, the jitters. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's what happened to me. You know, I really want to get into something creative. I need to do something. I need to do something just because you're going to be so used to it. It will rewire your brain to be more self, um, self motivated and also more critically thinking and give you all those resources as well at the same time. So that's really nice. Yeah. Universities, I think college in general is just great at teaching you how to teach yourself or, or yeah. teaching you ways, new ways to learn, new ways to look at things. Just in general, I think just college is great at that. And of course, it depends on where you go to school. What I pretty much always say on the whole like art school question is that if you can, if you have the ability and you want to go, 
then do it. Then go to art school. Yeah. It's going to be worth it. It's it, it might not be exactly what you think it is, but like you said, you get out of it what you put into it. You're paying to have someone not give you the skill. It's not it's not a freaking magic spell that they're yeah, casting exactly. on you. Art Anonymous isn't going to come, unfortunately, and channel his divine art powers into you. I wish it worked that way. That'd yeah, be, that'd, that'd be, be amazing. I'd love an easy art spell that I could just, you know, become a great, amazing well, artist. I get Art Anonymous to work that one of those up for us. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk to him. Yeah, we'll <laughs> we'll talk send to him some new copy. Yeah, we'll commune with him. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you get, you get out of art school what you put into it. And... I think that's a really actual tough lesson to learn. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's something that a lot of students really pick up on until unfortunately a lot later in, in their college career. And it's like, oh, well, maybe I've been slacking off a little bit more than yeah. I wanted. Uh, yeah, that's one thing I would highly recommend. Um, people go into school and they think, I just have to do these steps. I just have to do them. I, don't, I, I, I just have, have to do, them do well. it to get through. Exactly. I just need to do the thing. And then at the end of this thing... I'll move on to the next thing. Um, but I, I think that's a, a consequence of the schooling system of like how we are in school and stuff like that, where it's like, go to the next grade. And then after you graduate, you can get a job and go to college or whatever. And then after that, then you'll just magically have a thing. Yeah. And they don't really say like, and maybe they do. I don't know. I don't remember them saying it's me at my school, but they don't say, you know, you only get out of it what you put into it. If you're just there doing the thing the passing grade yeah uh, you, grades and grades aren't important but yeah you have to you have to apply yourself exactly yeah yeah you have to really say like okay do i really want this how bad do i want this am i willing to you know not go out friday night and saturday night to stay in and, and really make my work and i think a lot of people aren't willing to do that a lot of people aren't and you really have to think about that i mean that's one of the first things one of my professors said um he said who here wants to be an artist and everybody raised their hand obviously we we're in sculpture and uh, he said, who here wants to have a balanced life, have a balanced work life, um, being an artist and being per have personal time? And <laughs> All, most people raise their hand. Get out. <laughs> and he literally said, you might want to rethink being an artist. And he said, if you think that you're going to be able to, um, you know, work 40 hours a week, hang up the coat, and then go home and live, you know, like, like most people, um, just have two separate things and have them be really balanced, it's not going to happen as an artist. And there's all sorts of reasons for that. Um, one, it's really hard to be a self-sustaining artist and make your artwork and make money. Two, it's really hard, it's even harder if you are able to do that, to do that within 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. You know, you're really trying to be an entrepreneur. You're trying to make your own work, market yourself, create your own brand, sell your stuff, um, communicate with other people get into galleries whoa business brad i know exactly yeah no but it's true it's, it's a, you are an things. entrepreneur yeah. as an artist absolutely yeah you you are a business and you have to think about it that way um i mean being an artist there is a tax form you can use um to deduct business related expenses which would be anything that you used for um for art making purposes as long as to the government as long as you were doing that as as a business um but for that, you just have to say, I was trying to make money, which is a good thing if you need uh, tax deductions on art supplies and stuff. But you have to think about that. And he was entirely right. Like, at first, I was, like you were saying, Ben, I was sort of like, okay, well, I'll just do this. And I, you know, went home and I only spent, you know, the minimum amount required of time. And then when I, as I came a sophomore, junior, senior, I started spending more and more time towards at the end of my career as a college student I was spending 80 plus 80 to 80 plus hours a week in school or working on school related stuff which is a ton it's a ton yeah it's a ton but honestly I, I loved it um but at the same time like I didn't really see my fiance that much I very rarely hung out with my friends and it's sort of how long do you want to do that for because it's not just a couple months you have to do that you have to do that for years possibly yeah possibly, possibly years. years and I, I think there does come a time where you so so I used to listen to an artist by the name of Fang Zhu, and I'll shout him out here real quick. FZD, uh, Fang Zhu Design. He has like a school in um, Singapore, I believe, in, on the, off the or Malaysian peninsula there. But he's just, he's an amazing artist, and he has been for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And he says that like if you're going to school, especially if you're going to my school, I'm going to slap this in your face pretty much every day. If you want to be an artist that is good and hireable by the time you get out of school, just say goodbye to your social life. Like, yeah. you have to sacrifice it now mm -hmm. if later you want to be able to, 
you know, reap the benefits of that, that, that work that you're actually able to create. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which is a scary proposition. I mean, it's, it's almost like going to school to become a doctor. It's like all yeah. these, all these hours. And yeah. I, I do compare it to, to being a, someone in the medical profession a lot, because I think it is comparable in amount of time that oh, you, definitely. you have to. And I think that's like a good way of kind of thinking about it. If someone's thinking, I would like my career to be in an art field. It's like, well, would you be willing, like, maybe it's not this much amount of time, but would you be willing to go to school for like eight to 12 years? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing too, is um, I just graduated my BFA, but that is usually just the first step. If you want to be an artist, um, like a usually like a revered artist, like really good, like what you're saying, like if you really want to be an accomplished artist um, in the traditional sense, the BFA is just the very first step. That's your very, that's your introduction. No one expects you to be a good artist when you graduate from undergrad. Actually, they'd be very surprised if you are comparable to um, practicing artists who have been doing it for years, simply because they've been doing it for 20 plus years. Usually the route that they expect you to take is, okay, you want your BFA? Great. If you really want to be an artist, go get your MFA. When you get your MFA, that's when you really, really, really um, take all the skills that you learned from undergrad, and when you take it to grad school, you really refine them. And then when you leave grad school, then you'll really be an artist. You know, um, I've heard plenty of people and maybe say, not. Maybe maybe yeah. like maybe you're still not up to snuff. Maybe yeah. you're just not. Yeah. Getting, but getting I think up if you if you point. love it, you know, you'll continue until you until you do get up to that point. I mean, it is hard. There are there are obstacles that get in the way. Like for me, for instance, I have an obstacle, um, financial obstacle. I, I don't, I can't afford a studio space. So what do I have to do? I have to get a regular job. Right. Um, and it's not a terrible, you know, I graduated college. I, it's a, it's a job comparable, um, with that accomplishment makes decent money, but it's not really what I want to do. So I'm going to work there 40 hours a week, get a studio space and then work at my art probably 40 hours a week as well. So I'll be, working 80 hours a week again, um, just simply because I want, I need money to survive one, but then I need to make my artwork, um, in, up to snuff as we were saying. So that way, eventually I can get rid of that job, that normal job. So I can make art my job, but first you really have to invest the time and I don't expect it to take six months a year. Um, I expect it to take, you know, multiple, multiple years. It's something that is a growth, a business growth thing. So I want to, I want to make a comment on, on like age, because I think a lot of people get get hung up on either their age or if maybe you're a little bit older and you're thinking, well, there's these young people that are, you know, creating stuff that's so much better than me. Like I have so much catching up to do. And I think there's this this actual thing that that exists separate from your age, which is like your artistic age, your art, your age as an artist, yeah, someone who started drawing when they were five and now they're. 15 has been drawing for 10 years maybe they haven't been doing it as well as someone that could go from 15 to 25 and learning as well as someone that could do that but mm -hmm. still they've been you know you can't you can't forget that they've been drawing for 10 years yeah 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 and, and when you graduate from you know college as an undergrad well maybe someone who's been doing art for for their entire life and you uh, at age, you know, 18. 16 or 18, whatever, in high school, you're just like, oh, I'm kind of into art now. And then you decide to go to college for it. And then this guy, you know, business Brad comes along. He's a total douche. He's good at finances too, yeah. but he's amazing at art. How? How's he yeah. so good at art compared to you? It's like, well, think about it. It's like not everybody starts from the same place. Exactly, yeah. And you have to be honest with yourself. And it's just, I'm a big believer, and so has Ben, I think, and the time investment of time will pay off in in whatever you want whatever field you want it to pay off in so like if you want to make a living at art well of course you're gonna have to invest a lot of time into making the art and making being a good artist that's you know one of the most important things and then you also have to invest time into business and marketing and selling yourself and selling your products and where to place unfortunately them and, unfortunately yeah um but it's it's necessary and it's because you are your own business, so where do I put my products? How do I sell my products? How do I get my information out there? How do I advertise? All of those things. You'll have to invest time into that as well. Um, but if you really love the art, well, then you'll love, you'll learn to do the business side of the things too. But it will pay off eventually. It will. You'll eventually get to a point, I believe, where you can make a living um, just simply doing art. And if you can't, then at least you'll have the skills. Um, to get a different profession 
which is related to art in some way. So like professors um, in, in college are art- artists. They're full-time pra- practicing artists as well as full-time um, teachers and professors. And, you know, that's one thing I really want to do. I love to teach. I would love to teach, but I also really love to make artwork. So, um, you know, they found something that is very directly related, gives them access to a studio so they can create their artwork, and also they can help um, inspire and create new artists in the world for the next generation. Um, so that might be a thing that you might have to do. Just really find out if you, um, if you really love it, you'll have to, you, you'd have to know that there's a lot of struggles with this field. Um, and that's fine, you know. It's tough. It's, it's tough, tough stuff. It's tough, but you just have to, you have to Dude, speaking of so, some tough stuff here, I have some tough stuff. I have some amazing artwork that I want you to check out. Okay. But then I want to comment on something that you just said as well after the fact. So this artwork is titled for you, my good friend Daryl, <laughs> Abomination. Abomination. X Y Z. Oh, oh, that's great. I like it. <laughs> Do you? Uh, Your face says different. <laughs> Abomination X Y Z. Okay, so let me just explain here. We got um, an amalgamation of different Nintendo characters. I, be- I believe the term was abomination. Oh, sorry, <laughs> an abomination of different. I think they are Nintendo characters, aren't they? Mm-hmm. All of them. Mm-hmm. Okay, it has a Donkey Kong body with a Mr. Game and Watch sort of arms and legs coming out of a jig. What is that? A Jigglypuff head? Or yeah, it's a Jigglypuff head <laughs> with a Wario face. The tongue coming out of it with a, with a glove at the end with holding a mallet. There's this Link's sword at the bottom. There's a couple of little creatures. It's just a, an abomination of all things Nintendo. And uh, I don't understand it. Well, of course. I mean, very rarely do we understand yeah. the artwork that we see on DeviantArt. It's yeah. just, you know, with so many, you know, we talk about this. There's so many good artists out there. It's hard mm-hmm. to stand out. And yeah. I think this this person has really kind of hit the nail on the head. This here. definitely stands out. Yeah, this yeah, is exactly. definitely yeah standing out. Um, overall, I'd give it a, uh, a seven. A seven. All a right, seven, that's yeah. pretty good. I like it. Um, I, I'm curious if they rendered this themselves or just sort of. Oh, absolutely! It's very so? yeah, it's very authentic. I can very uh, I can tell. Yeah. How much. Uh, how much work went into this yeah okay good definitely was not cut up in photoshop and uh amalgamated together as you yeah, said yeah yeah i i think i think you're lying <laughs> <laughs> all right what do you what do you got for me daryl oh yes yes because i, I, I just i'm it. feeling my critique juice is flowing right now and yeah. i feel like i could just give a really good critique oh good good i need to find one well not find one i downloaded <laughs> it i need to pull it up hmm i have a few images here I think I think I'll show you this one. This one's good. Okay. I like it. It's uh, I don't know what the title is. Probably my. Why don't you give it a self title? Oh, it's called Taste the Rainbow. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you. Taste the Rainbow is what it's called. All right. Great. Let me see this bad boy. It's perfect. Ooh. So this is oh, okay. Those are feet, huh? <laughs> yeah, those are feet, bro. Oh, so I am. I see. Taste the Rainbow. Hmm. Um, I'm definitely. I'm definitely getting some furry vibes. Which, you know, to each their own, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, There's definitely a lot of colors going on here. The the perspective of this image is very interesting. They've done it in a very interesting way, whereas the things in the background are all at the exact same perspective and flat level, and then the feet are just very large. (laughs) (laughs) So I think they did a good attempt at kind of faking the perspective here. Uh, The color use... Um, we, we got some nice Roy G. Biv going on here, mm-hmm. uh, maybe more pink, pink Roy G. Biv, but, but either way, uh, there's some good stuff, some good art going on here. Yeah. Uh, just immediate, immediate number reaction. Um, definitely like, definitely like a seven as well because, because the perspective cheat, honestly, that's what it is. I would have given it, I was thinking a nine, but the perspective really just kind of, it threw me that off. That was that off. was the yeah. kind of moment where it all fell that. apart for me. Would you I want do, to taste that rainbow? You know, you know what? <laughs> I will comment and say that the purple tail is a nice touch. So let's go seven and a half, seven just a half? for the purple tail. Okay. Also, no, <laughs> no, you don't want to taste the rainbow, bro. I don't. I don't either. I like the. Uh... What does taste the rainbow from? Skittles, bro. Is it Skittles? Okay, yeah. I don't eat Skittles, so sorry. They're delicious. 
I don't really eat sweet candy too uh, much, other than these lifesavers that I got for uh, for Christmas, for Christmas from Santa Claus. Yeah, my big my big present from Santa Plus Claus. Plus some lights. Plus some lights. <laughs> lights are nice. How much have you had to invest in getting your setup so that you can create what you need to create without running into any like issues or you know what I'm talking about, right? Like uh, any anything that detracts from your capabilities of yeah. making. So are you asking for me personally or how much do I think you would need to like do digital art in general? I would say you personally, but also digital art in general, just because, um, and I'm not looking for a number or anything. I don't know if you want to disclose that, so it could just be general. Yeah. But um, yeah, because I'm interested in hearing the differences in amounts um, comparatively from the traditional to the... So for like a standard setup for, for like digital art, 3D modeling, um, I think there's an initial large investment but after you get past that point it's a very minimum uh investment from that from that point on whereas with traditional art it's kind of like these constant Mm -hmm. uh maybe not nickel and diming constantly but smaller payments over a longer period of time yeah and yeah i would say that's a big thing um i would say think about that when you're trying to get into art and then plan accordingly it might take you a few months to to reach a point where you can say, okay, I need to invest this much money because I want to be able to make my art to the best of my capabilities without having like, you know, technical issues throwing me back. Like let's say a bad computer, which crashes and loses all your files or whatever, or um, something that can't run the software that you need to run. And a more traditional sense, you know, um, for a ceramicist, you need a, a place to make the stuff. So you might need to rent a studio space. You might need to, you're definitely going to, if you want to do it on your own privately, you have to buy a potter's wheel or um, a place to make your sculptures. You need to buy a kiln. You need a, all of these things. It's a big investment monetarily-wise before you can even really start. Yeah, I can't imagine how much a kiln costs. Yeah, it's like $3,000 for Jesus. a decent one. Yeah. And if you want to make big sculptures, then you should... <laughs> You're just screwed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and there's, that's the nice thing about um, ceramics. It's the big the ceramic community, um, there are places you can go to firework and... And they'll do it usually by pound or by a certain of square inch. That Is that pretty up. expensive to get somebody else to do it for you? Not not necessarily, no. Um, Same with, you know, digital. If you want to 3D print something, you yeah. can go somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 3D printing is pretty expensive. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, for a good size print. Typically. Okay, yeah. Um, I would say it's a dollar per pound usually to fire something. Um, and a pound can go a long way. In pottery, it's like, you know, I can make your cup there for in about a pound and a half of clay. So it cost me like a dollar fifty to fire that. Yeah, that's pretty cheap. Yeah, it's pretty cheap. And then you have to fire it again, so three dollars, and then the glaze, however much that costs. For that, for for my cup here, it's like a twenty ounce con- my Contigo cup that I always drink out of. Mm-hmm. To like three D print that hollow PLA plastic from like Shapeways dot com, it's probably like, probably like twenty ish dollars. Really? I yeah yeah probably in all honesty, shape uh, all the online stuff is super expensive. Mm-hmm. So if you're really into three D printing, I I say invest and get yourself a, a nice cheap printer. But to kind of go back to the digital side of things, uh, so so let's say you want to like you're just really into ZBrush, right? That's mm-hmm. my main software. You can get um, a tablet ZBrush Core, which is like the the lesser version of ZBrush as a as a main software, but uh, ZBrush Core uh, and a tablet for like three hundred dollars. It like comes with it. I think it might be even less than that with the new Into 07. I'm not even sure on that. I can can look that up and maybe throw some links up somewhere. But uh, that plus like a three to five hundred dollar laptop, all your laptop really needs is um, I would say like some eight, RAM. eight gigs of RAM to yeah. like run, run ZBrush software. pretty decently well. I would say sixteen if you want to be like really safe. In my personal machine, I, I've built every computer that I've ever owned, minus my my laptop. But uh, my computer has sixty four gigs of RAM. Jesus yeah. Christ! Yeah, but I use it. I I use my RAM. I have tons of stuff open at the same time. Yeah, definitely. For my processor, it's just an i seven processor. Um, I I think it's um. Intel. It's, no, it's Intel. Yeah, yeah. In, I think Intel is the only one that measures with the i system. It's like something Lake. It's like last last year's generation of i7 processors. And that isn't, I would say the the RAM is the most important. It's just for rendering and moving things. If you're doing really complicated builds, like you need to be able to process that stuff 
quickly. Yeah, so typically for rendering, uh, it's it's either GPU, so your graphics card, or or on your processor. Rendering typically doesn't happen on the RAM. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say rendering. I mean like um, as you're working with the model, as you're moving it around and stuff like that. Yeah, so in ZBrush, that's exactly what RAM is used yeah. for. ZBrush is a really strange software, and it, there's a whole history, and I talked about it in a recent stream, but we don't need to go into exactly mm -hmm. why it is the way it is but uh yeah i think i think for you know the price of uh i don't know like an xbox or a playstation you can get into yeah. zbrush relatively yeah. cheap with a a cheap laptop and a tablet but if you want to really go for it uh, i think i think the zbrush software like the main suite is upwards to like 800 dollars but there's another site, there's third-party sellers that you can get it for around $650, mm -hmm. get like a $1,000 laptop, a really nice one, that's like, yeah. I think you can get a pretty good laptop for $1,000. Oh yeah, great and laptop. If you, yeah, if you can't, then uh, <laughs> I don't know, let me let me help you out, I'll send you, I'll send you a link or two. But yeah, yeah I, I don't know, it's, it's not a huge investment, but... But it's money, it's investment. Right, and then there's, you know, are you going to school, are you... Mm -hmm. How much time can you dedicate that? to it? Yeah, and... And then how long are you willing to put into it before you see your return on it? Because it's a while. You have to learn. And just like anything else, you have to learn everything, the ins and outs. And this is a very, you know, I've used ZBrush like maybe for like a couple of weeks while I was like on a break. Mm -hmm. And it's a hard software to get used to. It's, you know, Ben makes it look easy going around stuff and like looking, clicking buttons and everything and moving smoothly through the interface. But it, it is, the interface was annoying for me just because I didn't understand it yet. But, um. It takes, I would say, I probably, I don't know, what would you say, like a year to get proficient in the yeah, software? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it depends, like, how much you actually use it. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I probably couldn't put, like, an exact hour count on it. But if you use ZBrush, like, at a full time job, like, let's say you did 40 hours a week, I don't know. I don't think it would really take that long to get, you know, really proficient in navigating the software. But there's there's just a lot of old stuff in the software that just I was gonna say. It, there's there's some things that are very particularly used in very particular situations and yeah, exactly that's what I was trying to say like yeah the ins and outs of like oh I can use this thing um, but I can be more efficient more effective by using this tool which is in yeah this I mean I, area. after a year of me mm. using ZBrush I didn't feel like I knew how mm -hmm. to use every single thing in ZBrush yeah exactly and I don't, it, that's not necessarily necessary right, right? It, it's um, not. Uh, you could you could just know which is how to why do I have course. this how to ZBrush course where you yeah. can go learn the things to get you up and running blah 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 it's yeah. on my gum road go check it out <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah no it's uh that's that's the thing is that we're really that you're bleh, that you're really looking at um you know if you wanted to be a be a entrepreneur be a business selling artwork in a traditional sense let's say ceramics since that's what I'm most familiar with but um. Everything, I would say everything, really. Um, you need a way to photograph your work. You know, you need a way to make your work, obviously. But not just make your work. You need to photograph your work. You need to best represent your work. You, you got to tell people a, about your work. Exactly, yeah. So you need an internet, or you need a social media, or um, a web, you definitely need a website, or portfolio, or resume, and you're going to need to, so you're talking about investments in lights, uh, DSLR, definitely, the Adobe Creati Creative Suite, so you can edit your photos, make sure everything looks great. Um, your investment in a in an HTML page. So there's definitely a big investment starting out mm -hmm. in traditional as well. Yeah, exactly. And it's you don't need those things right away, right? You could go to craft yeah, fairs and you're sell your stuff. Yeah, because you're gonna crap at, at the yeah, art. So. Exactly. But <laughs> you, you don't want to share all the the stuff. Exactly. Sometimes I'm, I think that's a detriment for digital artists in the early stages because because I think people get discouraged by you know pumping out shitty art mm -hmm. and I, I, I'm not, I'm not even gonna call it art. Pumping out shit, shit poop sandwiches, which is what yeah. I always call them. Yeah. And then, hey, somebody shouts out, your your thing sucks. And they're like, yeah. oh, I didn't know it sucked. And it's like, no, it's like really, really bad. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well. Yeah. That's what our school's great I for. guess I'm bad at this, so I'll stop doing it. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, of course you're bad at it, man. You got five hours invested into right, it. Right, but they don't, at that stage, you, a lot of that, you're not there yet. You don't, yeah. under, you don't even yeah, exactly. understand uh, I think a lot of young people don't really understand that sometimes where they, they try something new and they're not great at it immediately or they're not even, you know, inclined in that direction at all. And it's like immediately 
pull out, mm-hmm. eject, like yeah. pull that I mean, lever. It's hard, it's hard for your brain to accept being bad at something, right? Because you just naturally don't want to be bad at things. Um, and that's, that's a big thing about this, I would say, about art in general. It's just like you're going to be bad at it for a long time. But not just that. Even when you're good at it, you're still not going to be um, the greatest, right? Uh, uh, some people are the greatest, but it's all such a subjective field that it's like, Maybe you're the greatest, but maybe this other dude's the greatest, right? Or maybe, yeah, you're okay or good, but there's so many other people that are way better than you, but only because this person likes uh, comic book art as opposed to realism, right? So you're not going to be able to get everybody happy, but just keep going with it and just keep trying. And if, like I said, I think it's only important if you really enjoy doing it. If you really enjoy doing it, just keep doing it, right? Just keep making work. Um, yeah, I always say that you're going to do exactly what you want to do. Exactly. And at the end of the day, everybody does. Yeah. So. <laughs> but if you're trying to get out the professional level, I think it is important to realize that you might have to take, um, you might have to take a break. You might have to stop for a little bit, and you might have to rework your life around so that you can. Got to make sacrifices. Exactly. So you can make things work the way you want to, um, and that's hard. And just to be sure, and once again, this is the more intermediate or advanced section, I guess you could say, but just make sure that you're willing to make those sacrifices and make sure that you're um, not discouraged that it is such a hard field to get into. Um, because you can do it. Everybody can do it. It's just... Dude, if I can do it, literally anybody can do it. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah, same here. Same here. Yeah, like if I've, I've sold things. I've been commissioned to make work for people. Um and I'm still not, you know, that sounds impressive, but I'm still not, you know, making a living off of it or anything like that. Um, so, like, yeah, I've, I've passed the first step, but now I just got to keep going to the next and next next step. You're way past the first step, but well, there's, there's a lot of a lot of steps in there that you're forgetting. Yeah, well, I know. Well, you, yeah, uh, that's my own, yeah, issue, I guess, with the uh, self-art thing. But, um, yeah, I would just say don't forget that there's always going to be that next step and that next challenge you're going to have to overcome. That's a big important thing. And yeah, and investment is a big important thing too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you're if you're willing to put in that initial investment, I am someone that that thinks that you should pay for the things that you love yeah. uh simply for the fact of um it, it it automatically invests you in that thing. So if if you really if you really want to be a digital artist, you know, don't maybe don't pirate that software. Yeah. Maybe if you're feeling that you really want to do this, buy it, invest into it, and if you put that price tag down on that thing, you're kind of you're kind of making it a little bit more in stone. Where you're saying, well, I have to. I'm, I'm serious thing. about this, yeah. and I I I want to do this. Let's let's move forward on it. I'm willing to pay for this thing. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, I'm willing to put down real life investments so that I can get something out of it. And yeah, yeah, I agree with that 100%. Yeah, I think it, I think it changes the way you think about it yeah. a little bit too. Yeah. But uh, Daryl, before we go here, yes. I have I have some art I want you to look at here, and I was kind of I was kind of flip flopping a little bit flip-flopping. on on uh, which artwork I wanted to show you, uh, and I think I've decided. It is decided. This one, uh, it says in brackets that it's a trade. So I think someone traded this artwork with somebody else. Uh-huh. Uh, but it, it, it's called, uh, and I'm going to do my best to pronounce this, Mook on the Fridge. Oh, nice. And, nice. Um, I'm ready well, for it. Here you go. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> God. Why? Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I scrolled down to look at their other art. Well, that's cheating. I know. It's, so. all, it's all the same, too. <laughs> it's all... No, no. Uh, <laughs> it's all very different. It's all very similar. Uh, okay. We're looking at uh, a character. He's a, he or she is a cow character. Blonde hair, blue eyes, um, white What's that skin. I was just, like, just explaining. Uh, there's, some, there's some words. It says, lucky, why you keep... Cow <laughs> milk on the fridge. <laughs> what in what does that mean, Daryl? I have no idea. <laughs> um, right next to the ears, which have some motion lines, it says woggle. Woggle? I think it's woggle. Let me zoom in here. No, I can't zoom in. And then uh, <laughs> so there's some motion lines around the cheeks. It says snarl. This this creature has a tail. It's almost like a what are those things called? The half man, half horse. 
Oh, a centaur. Centaur. It's almost like a cow tar. Okay. Because <laughs> um, it has more human-like features up front, except its nose and ears are different. He's just a little bit more anthropomorphic than, yeah. than maybe your standard cow. Exactly. Uh, it has like furry tum-tum. And then furry, f- furry tum-tum. Okay. Green fur, green furry legs like a centaur. Um, like a centaur would have, I would say. Mm-hmm. Or a minotaur. A minotaur. Okay. Oh, it Ooh, could be a minotaur. Okay. All right. That's this actually one could be of. a minotaur. Okay. Um, maybe he is. Maybe he is. He has four massive uh, sacks. Uh-huh. Which go on? I'm assuming are like milk sacks. <laughs> milk sacks? What? What are those called? <laughs> udders? udders. Are you talking about udders, Daryl? <laughs> yeah, four massive <laughs> udders. I forgot the word first. Milk. <laughs> milk. Got some milk sacks. Mm. Mm, let me <laughs> see them minotaur milk sacks. Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, four massive udders. Um, underneath it says slosh. Some more movement lines. Movement lines all over. Move the lines in the tail. It's pretty much an animation. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty point. much. Yeah, um, I don't know what's happening here. It's sitting down, so the udders are right in front of your face, and the guy's looking down to the left, his left. I have a question for you, Daryl. Yeah. Would you taste that rainbow? No. <laughs> no. Maybe in a maybe in a glass. Just kidding. No, but not. That is so weird. I give this a, a four. A four? A four. All right. This one obviously went over your head. Yeah, Let obviously. Let me see what you got oh, for me. There's a shark tooth uh, necklace, too. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. I did not notice this shark to- tooth necklace. Uh, there is, a- there's a lot of motion going on in this thing, for sure. I, I think it, this is at least worthy of a five, Daryl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it creeps me out too much. It makes, okay. It makes me feel sick. All right. What do you got for me? Oh, let me see here. Sorry, person, whoever you are. Got this beautiful thing. I think uh, you'll really appreciate the... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh. Oh, my. Yeah, some sort of scene. Okay. Is this zoomed in at all, or is this kind of the crop we got That's a crop you going got. Going on. That's what it is. So, um... There's a nice... The first thing that really stuck out to me was that there was an egg in the sky. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this is more of a perspective thing where this egg is being tossed at this this feline on the top left. I can see that. And it's turning its head because it saw the egg come. It's awaiting the impact. Right. It's like, ah, uh, flinching away. But it still wants to look regal, so he's looking very... Um, like he, He's very defiant He's in the face of this egg that's hurtling towards his face. And then obviously down here in the bottom right is the uh, other feline who threw this egg. And he just looks, you know, I'm just going to say it, he looks evil. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely getting evil vibes in the bottom right-hand corner mm-hmm. and more regal, pure vibes up here. And this this is saying something really big, and I feel like I'm close to figuring out what it is, but I just, I'm Can't not, it. yeah, I'm just, uh, it's yeah. very ephemeral, and I'm just grasping at, at this this thing that I can't quite catch. But yes, he definitely threw this egg, and it's it's some kind of stance on, uh, uh, I think, poverty mm-hmm. in in America. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hit it right <laughs> nail on the head. That's exactly what it is. Poverty is that what, in what was the title of this piece? Uh, poverty in America. Oh my god! Like, yeah. fucking nailed it. <laughs> he got it, hundred percent. All right. Well, just because you know, I'm feeling really good about this one. I'm going to mm-hmm. say uh, a nine, nine mm-hmm. out of ten. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I like the signature. Oh, I did not notice the zig. Uh, it's it's right. It's how could you miss it? <laughs> well, and it's uh, it's on the tail. On the oh, bottom. okay, okay. That's that, that's a uh, very um, creative and yeah. unique. How it wrapped yes. around the character. I've never seen that before. Yeah, yeah. In the art world. <laughs> All right, I think. I think I think we're done. I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how we end these things. Yeah, we're done. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Any closing thoughts, Daryl? Closing thoughts. Keep making stuff. Stop stopping. Stop stopping? Stop stopping. Just keep doing it. Make sacrifices for your art. Make, make sacrifices. Keep failing. That's important. It's yeah, important to make bad work. You don't learn anything by succeeding. Yeah, you don't. Just, you, it just makes you feel good. And it's overrated. Yeah, who wants to feel good? Exactly. I just want to fail <laughs> all the time. No, but seriously, <laughs> just fail a lot. No, that's, that's it's my true. Advice. You, you learn from failure. Yeah. Um, extrapolate information. Think critically about your work. Don't just make it. Um, critique your own work critique yeah. your own work and be honest step away from your work that's a big thing uh, closing other closing thoughts 
Keep making stuff. Really, just keep it. That's the important thing. As long as you're making stuff, set goals. Say we could talk about that some other time next time. Yeah, about I think that would be a setting. good topic. Yeah, as well. Some planning stuff. How about how about you guys out with some planning? I bet we have different ideas about goals. Probably. It'd be nice to hear. I have a big thing about planning, which I have yet to implement, which I need to implement. <laughs> but yeah, getting stuff yeah, done. Yeah, I think I think deadlines. I think uh, goals goals and schedules are important, and I think different people handle them in, in different ways. But, yeah, I think we should definitely talk about that. That would yeah. be a good topic. But, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions for us or topics that you'd like to see us discuss in yes, the, a future Art Anonymous episode, throw please. them down in the comments. Yeah, yeah, we'd be glad to take them and glad to answer them as best as we can. Well, we're never uh, wrong. We're never wrong, I don't yeah. even know why you said that. Yeah, exactly, as best as humanly possible. Well, which, y- there you it, go. Which is what we will be giving you. As best as human. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Take it away, business bread. Later, gang. I guess. <clears throat> now I know I said I wouldn't do the intros anymore, but the outros now. That's a completely different thing. You see, well, Business Brad is a little sick and under the weather this week, and his throat's not doing so great. Plus, you know, well, I may have absconded from the intros, but no, 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 no. Of course, you know, I'll still do an outro here and there. (laughs) Those cookies and snacks, you know, I can't can't really pass them up completely, and I'm kind of slightly addicted to them. Now, and, well, uh, here it is. Art Anonymous is uh, uh, the product of... Uh, normally, Business Brad does this, and he's a lot better at it. Uh, uh, Art Anonymous, the podcast, is a product of, of you know, Ben and, and Daryl. Very good, good people uh, that take very good care of, of, of us and, and give us all sorts of snacks and goodies. And if there's, you know... Uh, maybe uh, subscribing to their channel. Not sure what that means, but uh, do that. And um, also, uh, well, um, gosh, I should have had Business Brad write this down for me. Anyway, it's a podcast, and uh, yeah, that's about all you need to know. Okay, goodbye. I'll take my snacks now.